Today on Larry King Now, actor Wes Bentley on his new film, We Are Your Friends. I love this script. I'm, I'm a fan of the music. I have been for a long time, uh, since the 90s. Mostly the electronic stuff, less the dance stuff, but um, I do like the dance stuff as well. So I was very excited about it. It was very well written. And uh, I was looking forward to working with Zach. On the highly anticipated new season of American Horror Story. It terrified me, the ones that I've read so far. I literally went to bed with nightmares. <laughs> and I don't get nightmares really? anymore. Plus. They should. I can't imagine this is constitutional. I, mean, I, I don't think institutionalized bigotry is constitutional. It's all next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Our special guest is Wes Bentley. Since his breakout role as the mysterious yet soulful teenager in 1999's American Beauty, a film that would gone to five Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Wes Bentley has had a somewhat tumultuous career. However, in recent years, with high-profile roles in The Hunger Games, Interstellar, and American Horror Story, Wes is quickly becoming Hollywood's, one of Hollywood's most sought-after actors. It was recently announced that he'll be back for the fifth season of American Horror Story this fall on FX. And his latest role pairs him with Zac Efron in the highly anticipated new film, We Are Your Friends, coming to theaters August 28th. Let's talk about that movie. What it's about, what is it about? It's a film about uh, Zac Efron's character. He's a kid from the Valley, San Fernando Valley, and uh, he's a DJ with uh, electronic and dance music. And basically, it's a story about how you can make it big now with that kind of music. And uh, he's trying to get out of the Valley, trying to get um, move you on. You can make a, a fortune, star. right? You can, you can work Vegas money. and hundreds of millions of dollars. Apparently, <laughs> it's uh, it's huge now. So he's trying to make a break through that music. And you are. I play James Reed, who is a, a famous DJ from 10 years before, who is now sort of just sold out and is playing hits. Um, but before he was making music and uh, um, uh, still a popular DJ, but was a more creative DJ 10 years before this. And the two become friends? Well, uh, We are your friends. We are your friends, right, yeah. The, it's a cold. Cole looks for James to be a sort of mentor, and James um, accepts. And uh, they kind of become friends as much as you can with James. He's a bit of a, um, uh, um, can, I don't know what the word would be, he's a bit of an angry person. <laughs> did you like this right away? I did. Script? I, I love this script. I'm, I'm a fan of the music. I have been for a long time, uh, since the 90s. Mostly the electronic stuff, less the dance stuff, but um, I do like the dance stuff as well. So I was very excited about it. It was very well written, and uh, I was looking forward to working with Zach. Would you be a good DJ? I was a DJ for a little bit, kind Were of. I, I say that, like, I, you know, I don't know if anybody, uh, you know, at the time in LA, if you played that kind of music, you had to play from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, every once in a while I'd slip in and play on someone's set and stuff, and I loved it. I really, really wanted to do it. Do, do you consider yourself a musician when you're an electronic <laughs> DJ? That's a good question. Um, I, I feel two ways about that. You know, I agree that it's, uh, it's not a classical idea of being a musician. You're not playing an instrument for the most part, uh, at least in the, in, in when it sort of was taking hold in the 80s and 90s, you were sampling and, and using uh, electronic techniques uh, and records. And, um, but in the sense that are you making music? Yeah, some of it is, I think, great music. Pacing. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think, uh, y you know, you're using the tools at your disposal. I mean, they made a fork an instrument, right? I mean, they make a tin can yeah. an instrument. You, right, you kind of use what's in front of you and you turn it into, into music. Especially millennials, right? Yeah, millennials love this music. I mean, it's 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 uh, it's invaded every type of genre of music now. The um, electronic sound, and especially now DJs like David Guetta and whatnot, they're they've crossed over into pop in America, which has was long been the goal since techno in the '80s. So, uh, or I should say more like house in the '80s, and um, uh, now it's sort of happening. So yeah, it's it's something they don't realize that there was a real struggle for a long time in America to be a successful electronic artist and to um, make money doing it. Was Zach good at it too? Yeah, Zach's a very good DJ. He likes uh, music called trap music. He's a hip hop and trap music's like a mix between uh, kind of electronic uh, 
sounds with uh, with hip hop. They don't play Sinatra, do they? <laughs> <laughs> you can make a mix out of anything. You can, I guess yeah, you could. you could. You could take Sinatra. It, would, it probably would um, make you very angry, but uh, and as it should. <laughs> no one should do that, but someone might try. The genre, though, is often associated with uh, party drugs, ecstasy, right? Yeah, that's right. That's in the movie? There's a bit of that in the movie, yeah. You know, it's, uh, I guess, most... A lot of scenes, I, from, probably from the 60s on, you know, they all had their drugs, and uh, electronic music had its drug, and it was, it was probably ecstasy would be the one. Who directed it? Max Joseph. He uh, worked on Catfish. He was uh, one of the creators of Catfish, and uh, he, he was excellent. Uh, he's a, also a lover of the music, and he and I have similar tastes in the music, which have to do with using real instruments. So You like working with him? I really liked working with him, yeah. Up next, what can he tell us about the upcoming season of American Horror Story? Lots more with Wes after the break. <laughs> We're back with Wes Bentley. He, he, you started off in American Beauty, and of course he's coming in the We Are Your Friends movie in August, and of course American Horror Story, Hunger Games. Had quite a career. Yeah. You've also had some bumps in the road, right? I sure have, yeah. <laughs> you talk about your history with drug abuse. How did that start? Well, um, you know, I didn't do anything in high school. I was one of those kids in high school who looked down on people who smoked pot or, you know, partied and or even drank. I, what I just, city? Uh, in Arkansas, Little Rock. You know, you know, small town creek drinking, as they called it. Um, and uh, I just never did it. But when I went off to uh, um, New York, I started to become more creative, you know, uh, uh, I, I started to dabble. Uh, it really became a problem in 2006 is when it really started to take hold of me and the drugs got harder and I got deeper in it and I started considering things like selling and, and DJing for a, a living instead of acting. How did you get help? A number of things happened. You know, I was pushed in a corner. Some people have one bottom. I had 10 or 12 bottoms. A, a friend who passed away, I had uh, no money. I lost a lot of my, I lost contact with my family. And uh, I finally met somebody who I loved and that kind of turned it around. And then I met somebody who was sober and I wanted what he had. And, um, and then I worked really hard. I still work really hard. That lovely to full-time relationship? Um, with my, wa my wife yeah. now, yeah, we're, we're married and two kids, and um, she's, the, she's the love of my life. We're in a kind of heroin epidemic in America, huh? How do you, is that, what do you make of that? That's a tough one. Um, uh, it's a scary drug because it takes a hold of you quick and it becomes your job. And um, it makes me sad to hear, you know, that cause, because it's one that takes the life out of you. It's not... I guess some drugs are easier to recover from, but heroin's a particularly difficult one. Zach Heffern had some problems too, didn't he? Um, I guess. I, I didn't ever know of it um, personally, but um, I've heard, but I never saw But he went into rehab. Yeah, I guess he did, yeah. You were friends with Heath Ledger? I was, yeah. He was like a brother to me. Um, we were close friends. We worked on Four Feathers together in 2000, and since then we had become very, very close. and. Uh, we had good times and bad times. Yeah. What a loss that was. It's the biggest loss of my life, yeah. The next uh, season of Horror Story is called Hotel, right? That's right. Uh, Kathy was on with us. Oh, was she? Oh, She's good. A riot. Yeah. <laughs> She's a lot of fun. Who do you play? Oh, well, I can't say so much who I play. And I, Why is know, all this <laughs> secrecy? Uh, Kathy Bates was here. She said she was excited and curious to see what it would be like to act alongside Lady Gaga. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. How's she doing? Uh, well, I, I haven't actually worked with her yet, but I'm really excited. She's such a creative soul, you know. It's so, so many talented people involved with that show. It's, that's why I was so excited to be a part of it. Okay, so next American Horror Story is set in a hotel in L.A. That's right. What can you tell us? Um... There will be horrific things that happen, and it will be in a hotel, and uh, that's all I know. And Ryan Murphy is the creator, right? <laughs> he is. He's the creator. I know. I, I can tell you this. I do know this. It's it's the most. Uh, it terrified me. The ones that I've read so far. I literally went to bed with nightmares, <laughs> and I don't get nightmares really? anymore. How did it, you start with this show? I uh, am friends with Ryan Murphy. Uh, we actually met. Um, because I, I was going to do an HBO, I did an HBO pilot with him. Uh, the show didn't end up going, but we became good friends. And then he asked me to be a part of last season's American Horror Story. And 
from there it led to this season, which uh, I was hoping he would ask me. So reading the script mm. would frighten you, even though you're in a room with your furniture and the lights are on. And... It's my house. My house, I, my domain. Did your wife read it? No, I won't let her. <laughs> really, it's that? Well, it's two things. It's because it's secret, but also I, she's, you know, she gets pretty scared easy. So, uh, what's the reason for the secrecy? Well, you know, I think part of horror is the surprise, the element of surprise, but also the fans of the show are particularly good at making fan fiction. And I think sometimes you're nervous that they might get it right. Uh, and you'd rather them just be surprised. So, um, and I think that's the right thing to do with the show. Do you like your character? I love it. I love it. It's a complex character, which I'm uh, particularly fond of. <laughs> is television replacing film? There's more quality, they say, on HBO and the like than in the theaters. There is. There is a saturation of film um, because you're at, you can either make a $100 million film or you can make a $2 million or less film, and there's just so many of them, and the quality control isn't there anymore. And I feel like on TV, uh, the standards were set so high about 10 or 15 years ago that everyone, there is a quality control there and there's a certain outlets that we trust that if you're going to try and get in the game, you got to meet the quality, not the money. And that's kind of, uh, you know, that breeds a true creative success, I think. And that's, I think, where we are. Well, and so we see many Hollywood movie stars coming to television. Yeah, because you want to you want to really go where the ta you know the creative stuff is. Up next, I'll get Wes's take on a few things in the news, including the controversial religious freedom bill from his home state of Arkansas, and who is the actor he would most like to work with. Stay with us. We're back with Wes Bentley. He'll be with Kathy Bates and Lady Gaga in American Horror Story. That season comes in September, I guess. That's right. Yeah. And the film will be We Are Your Friends coming to theaters August 28th. In April, the governor of your state, Arkansas, your home state, signed the Religious Freedom Bill. It was tar the attempt was to target LGBT. Yeah. How'd you feel about that? Um, I'm, look, I'm already getting emotional about it. I'm, it's ex it's excruciating, excruciatingly disappointing to feel that where I'm from, you know, it's a state that's gone through a lot um, racially, uh, historically, historically been on the wrong side on a lot of issues. You know, although we celebrate this, the Central High School um, integration, it actually was an ugly mark on the state. Awful for us. Uh, exactly. Governor. Yeah, we, and that's a lot of our extended history. It felt like there was progression made for a long time with a more moderate stance, Bill Clinton, the state kept flipping between Democrat, Republican. It seemed to have a balance to it. Uh, I've been away for 20 years, so it's hard for me to, to, to fully participate as an Arkansan and say, you know, what's going on there exactly politically. But just looking at it from the outside, it, it's a shame that I have to feel embarrassed to say I'm from Arkansas now because something so full of hate is coming from the place of my home. Think the courts might throw it out? I, I think they should. I can't imagine this is constitutional. Um, I, I don't think institutionalized bigotry is constitutional. So you obviously feel good about the taking down of the Confederate flag in South Carolina and the like? I do. I was really happy and relieved to see that they chose to take the flag down. The flag is, um, you can't, there's no reasoning in saying that the flag escapes any kind of representation of slavery. You just can't do it. It's what the heritage is, right? It's what it's, it is. It's what the link is. You know, you can dance around it. You can make all the other excuses for it. You could say it's part of our history. It is part of our history, but we can also let some of that history go. We don't have to. You can think, to yeah. It. Yeah, we need to. We need to re reflect. Okay, let's lighten things up a little. <laughs> okay. Can we play a little game of if you only knew, Wes? Uh oh. Yeah, I just throw some questions at you. Oh. Who was the first girl you kissed ever? Sarah Bull. In Arkansas? In Arkansas. I'm, oh. that's, that's my guess. I'm, I bet it's terrible. How old were you? Probably five. Six. Wow. Five or six. Maybe six. Whatever happened to Sarah? I don't know. I don't know. She's in, we probably might still find in Jonesboro. <laughs> Is there any role you turned down you wish you hadn't? If I'm correct, I had an opportunity to, to, to play in Brokeback Mountain uh, five years before it was made. Really? Oh, wow. Uh, I don't know if it was ever actually going to be made, but I... I um, I know I was in the. I was asked, and I said, I said no. 
at the time, and I, I sort of regret that now. And your friend did it. My friend did it. And Jake Gyllenhaal, right? And, Dre, and Jake. I think at the time it might have been me and Matt Damon. I don't know if I'm remembering correctly, but... Yeah. Great movie. Great movie. I mean, amazing. If you had a super... If you could have a superpower, what would it be? I was going to say flying, but I, then I thought about maybe whatever. You know, I mean, Aquaman gets laughed at, but we don't know what's in the depths of the ocean. I think I'd want to... Whatever power you need to get to the depths of the ocean, I think I'd want to have that. I'd want to be invisible. <laughs> you would? Oh, that'd be hit. <laughs> <laughs> An actor or actress you'd like to work with? Jeff Bridges, without a doubt. He's a great actor. Yeah. Underrated. Got Academy Award, but still underrated. But that's why he's so good. He's underrated. Yeah. yeah. Something we'd find on your DVR. It's a lot of soccer. A l my wife hates it. A lot of soccer in The Bachelor, because she would watch The Bachelor and then... What do you make of the girls' team? Amazing. Amazing. It was truly such a pleasure to watch and love that everyone got involved and that everyone was so tactically aware of the Boy. team. What would you be if you weren't an actor? I would hopefully be a soccer player. But I think I was interested in criminology at one point. I Best remember. thing about Hollywood? The industry or the town? The town, I guess. The burgers. <laughs> I think the hamburgers Good are burgers. the best part of Hollywood, yeah. In and out. Yeah. Fa uh, five Guys, even though it's an East Coast yeah, five thing. Five Guys are good, we'll, too. We'll claim it, too. Worst thing about Hollywood? Um, oh, the, 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 the House of Cards. It's a House of Cards. Not the show. <laughs> the, the town. Literally, it's a town made of a House of Cards. Pet peeve? Um, uh, impatience. A couple of your favorite electronic artists. Portishead and Fantagram. Uh, the role fans most often approach you about? N now it's Hunger Games. It was American Beauty and American Horror Story. What was Hunger Games like to work in? Oh, it was great. It was fascinating. It was uh, some talented people on that movie. Jennifer Lawrence, Donald Sutherland. I had a lot of work with him. He was... Wow. <laughs> I love him. I love him. He is what he is. Exactly. Yeah. A <laughs> hidden talent. Uh, um, I'm a good chess player. If you can call that a talent. That's a talent. Is it? So I think it's a sport, too. You gotta I, be in shape. You gotta You be. do. I work on it every day. Something that makes you laugh. Oh, man, I laugh about a lot. Uh, people falling down. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's Mel Brooks. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, the exactly. The thing is if you fall down. Yeah, the is, right? is if I cut my finger. <laughs> 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 Your most cherished memory. You're a young man, but you must have a cherished memory. Well... My, the birth of my children, both of them, is cherished. But as a youth, it would be um, Christmas with my with my family, all of us together, um, putting our clothes on our head because we were bonding with our presents, not on our body, but laying them on our heads to bond. Your brothers with. and sisters. Three brothers, yeah, three goofy. Funny Where were you in the petting order? Um, petting. Number three in birth order. Uh, number one and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we'll wrap things up with some fan questions for Wes from social media. And I'll ask about his upcoming movie with Bryce Dallas Howard and Robert Redford. We'll be right back. We're back with Wes Bentley. We are your friends. We'll come to theaters August 28th and in the fall, another year of horror story. We, there was talk that you were being considered for the role of Batman in Batman versus Superman. You'd have been a good Batman. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. What happened? Uh, <laughs> I think it was more internet talk than real talk. I, I never heard anything of substance for myself. Ben um, Affleck got it, right? Ben Affleck, yeah. I when is that coming out? This year? I think it comes out this year, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing it. You keep in touch with the cast of American Beauty? I keep in touch with Kevin quite a bit. We text back and forth, uh, especially to make fun of each other. Great yeah. guy. Yeah, great guy. We wish yeah. he were Bobby Darren. Yeah, well, yeah. All right, tell me about the film you got coming, Pete's Dragon. Well, Pete's Dragon, it's a Disney film. It's a remake of, a, of an older Disney film from the late 70s, one of the, one of the stranger Disney films from a strange era. Um, I loved it as a kid. Um, it's with Bryce Dallas Howard and Robert Redford, and they're, um, it's about a kid who becomes orphaned and he becomes friend with a dragon, and the dragon takes care of him, and it's a, it's a beautiful story. Who do you play? I play the owner of a timber company, 
in a mill who um, is encroaching upon the lands of the dragon, and my daughter befriends the young boy. You're a bad guy. Maybe. <laughs> I think he's a good who's guy. Who's Robert Redford? He plays the um, the father of Bryce Dallas Howard, and he uh, um, has known the woods for a long time and claims to have seen the dragon at one point. An amazing guy. But An incredible guy. I was so lucky to even speak with pretty him. Pretty good actor. <laughs> yeah, he's all right. <laughs> all right. Um, some fan questions from our friends at comicbook.com. If you could play any comic book character, hero or villain, who would it be and why? I did always want to play Batman. That was... Uh, uh, You'd yeah. have been a great Batman. I appreciate that. Yeah, it was, it was, I liked Batman because he had no superpowers. And you, that's right, he did not. Right, yeah. So. And you'd have, you'd have been a good Bruce Wayne. Oh, I appreciate that. Next uh, time. Melissa Allison Efron via the Larry King Now blog. What was your favorite part about working with Zach Efron? Um, Zach's a great guy. Uh, he's a, a, he thinks through every scene, which I really appreciated. He um, approaches it. Uh, he has a definite approach to every scene, and he's um, and that's refreshing. You would be surprised how many times you work with actors who don't. Who is one of your favorite actors or actresses that you've worked with? Well, I've been lucky to work with some amazing actors. Uh, Kevin Spacey was such an early influence. It was hard not to say him, but I, you know, the list could go on and on with uh, with incredible actors. Lisa Lamborn on Facebook. Have you ever used one of your lines from the show out in the real world? Probably unintentionally, uh, but not, not intentionally. I can't remember doing that. It's Miguel on the Larry King Now blog. What can you tell us about American Horror Story Hotel that we haven't found out yet? We tried that before. <laughs> it's set in a hotel in Los Angeles. Los Angeles. And yeah. it's horrific. It's horrific. It's horrific and, and it's in America. That's about It's in America. It's in America. It scared you. It scared, it did give me nightmares. You didn't know that. It gave me nightmares, so now they know. At 20 Sunflower Twitter, if you could choose the theme for the next American Horror Story, what would it be? That's very good. Um, mm, oh. I would, I, I, it would have to be something in New York, I think. I think New York has such a hidden, a violent history that... And you'd want to shoot it there. Yeah, I'd want to shoot it there. Maybe that's why. Ben Gray <laughs> via the Larry King Now blog. Uh, Ryan Murphy recently said he's writing about his phobia or fear for this season of American Horror Story. Would you ever do a project that involved overcoming your own fear? I have done a project overcoming a big fear. I almost drowned when I was five years old and um, I couldn't swim for a long time. I didn't let the shower water hit my face, but... About four or five years ago, I did a film about deep sea diving, and I had to uh, I had to you know do a lot of diving training. Part of that was getting in the water with just a snorkel and and hanging in ice cold uh, water for a while. I turned upside down in the ocean. Did in you? Coney Island and never liked the water again. I've I've had similar experiences since with the ocean. I've had to force myself. I think the ocean is a different beast. I'm not comfortable. Me either. In the ocean. No, it's I, beautiful. I, I, I don't like deep sea. I don't like bouncing around. I don't. I, when I can't see land, I don't believe it. <laughs> Me too. Were you and I similar there? But I, if you had a superpower, you want to go down in the I water. I would because I'm curious about what's in the depths. Because then I would be safe. I would be able to breathe underwater, see, no pressure problems. Not to drop names, but Hubert Humphrey once told me that he would rather have invested all the money that we went in space to go down. There's more to learn inside than up there. I completely agree with you, and in a way that it coincides with particle physics in a way of our own body. We could find more inside ourselves than reaching out too far. What is Ryan Murphy's phobia, do you know? Um, uh, I'm, I'm guessing here. I think it's uh, not, doing, not writing a show to the best of his ability. <laughs> he would be I would think he, that's what he's most afraid of, but he, he doesn't do that, so he has nothing to be afraid of. What do you like being other people? Um, for a long time, I liked being other people because I didn't know who I was. Now that I'm more comfortable with who I am, I'm just interested in, I realize I'm just interested in other people. They're just, uh, it's fascinating, the possibilities in the human soul. And it's always you in them, right? I try to avoid it, but it's, there's always a piece. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you so much. Great. Thanks for having me. I want to thank my guest, Wes Bentley. We are your friends. Hits theaters August 28th, and the new season of American Horror Story premieres this fall on FX. And you can find me on Twitter at King's Things, and I'll see you next time.